morning everyone. Hope you are having a wonderful day. And today we are going to be talking about yet another instrument, the trombone. Now if you are coming to the video of the power trumpet in French and I am wondering why I don't have a trombone in Boston. Well that's because I don't have access to my school's orchestral instruments um, due to the coronavirus pandemic. However, I was a trumpet um, player and I, I am a pretty good French horn player so I had access to both instruments. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a, friend, a, a trombone but I can show you the parts and talk about it in general. So let's get into it. Now, the trombone is a brass instrument, it belongs to the brass family and the brass section of the orchestra and plays in the tenor range. That means it plays in the low range. Not very low, not moderately low, kind of moderately low, it's low. So basically low but not too low, essentially. That's what the um, trombone plays in. This is the tenor trombone, the regular trombone which plays in the tenor range as I said. Uh, low but not too low. Great. So before we get any further into its relation with the orchestra and its role and its, you know, um, uh, whatever, ensemble that provide everything, first let's break down its anatomy. So as you can see right here, we'll start over here. We have a mouthpiece. So as you can see, I've got a trumpet mouthpiece here. A trombone's mouthpiece is, as you can see, much larger than a trumpet mouthpiece. It has a much greater diameter. However, a trumpet mouthpiece will suffice for demonstration purposes. So this is where you place your mouth as such and you bite your lip to generate sound. As such. Now it does not sound like the best thing coming out of the um, mouthpiece but this has with the trumpet and the French one. Once this sound resonates throughout the entirety of the trombone, you will obtain um, you will obtain the titular trombone tone to the trombone sound. So, uh, and we already, I already demonstrated this in my trumpet French video. Anyway, this is the mouthpiece. Then over here we have the first slide brace and the second slide brace. So I'm sure you all know the trumpet, uh, the, the trombone has a slide, and what that means is it moves back and forth. So it's not the unlike the French horn, the tuba, and the trumpet which has keys. A trombone has a slide. So a slide moves back and forth, back and forth. I'll talk about that in a moment. And you move it back and forth, back and forth by using these braces. You use these braces to move it back and forth, right? It's by, this one you move back and forth, this one you use as a reference, right? So you use those two, you hold one and you use one to move it back and forth like this. It brings you perfectly to the outer slide. This is called the outer slide, this thing here. And it of course slides. So there's two sort of metal, uh, metal pipes inside the slide. And then the slide is sort of put on top of that. So that gives you the ability to sort of take it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the reason why you want to do that, I'll get into in just a moment, when we talk about how it produces sound and stuff. But for now, the anatomy is a, the trombone has a slide which you can take back and forth. And this is the outer slide. Here you have the water drainage thing. As I said, when you breathe out into a brass instrument, um, because your air keeps on going into it, right? This is true of wooden instruments as well. Your exhale consists of carbon dioxide and water. And unfortunately, the water can condense inside the instrument and lead to water logging. So that this is a very good result. Anyway, this is the outer, this is the outer slide. Then we come here and we come to the tuning slide. Now this is to tune the French horn. So it's I mean the tune the trombone. So it's a slide. Once again, you can pull it back and forth. And the trumpet and the French horn also have a tuning slide. Similarly, this has a tuning slide. You pull it back if you want to flatten it. You pull it forward if you want to sharpen it. In the tuning slide, it's not meant for playing. And then you go forward and you have the bell. Now the bell is from which the sound comes out from, and it sort of increases the taper over like that. Opposite taper actually. That's the anatomy once again. Mouthpiece, first brace, second brace, outer slide, inner slide, a water log, a water drainage system. Not inner slide actually. It's the tuning slide and the bell. Great. Now let's talk about how the of the trombone create sound. So as I mentioned, the, 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 the sound of the trombone is created by buzzing your lips. And when that goes through the mouthpiece and the, the piping of the trombone, that sound resonates and becomes the trombone sound. And you might think that's crazy, but I've demonstrated it in both my French horn and trumpet videos. So go watch those if you want the demonstration of what that would sound like. The point is, it is created as such. Okay. So I can produce sound with the trombone now. But how do I change the pitch of the sound? How do I play all the different notes? How do I make it higher or lower? And that's where the slide comes in. 
And as I mentioned, all instruments, all of instruments work on a very basic principle, and the trom trombone attacks this principle in the most direct way. And I'll explain how. So, I've talked, I've told, I've literally mentioned this in every wind instrument video, just in case you're watching and you're not watching the others. And it's very important when we talk about the trombone. So, how a wind instrument manipulates pitches by the very basic concept that if you have a short pipe, if you force air to go through a short pipe, a short amount of piping, the note will be, the pitch is going to be very, very high. Whereas if you force air to go through the longer distance, if you force it to go through more tubing, it's going to be low. So if I have a short tubing, it's going to be high, higher, and if I have much longer tubing to push the air through, it's going to be, before it exits the instrument, it's going to be low. That's a very simple um, concept which all the instruments put into play. And the brass instruments, other than the trombone, have to turn to play into having keys. And each key makes the air go through an extra amount of space, lowering the note. The trombone attacks it in a very direct way. You literally just slide this forward. As I said, it doesn't come off. There is a metal, it, it maintains this, it is a metal thing inside. So it sort of moves forward and it increases the amount of, literally by sliding it forward, by increasing the amount of air, distance the air has to travel. And when you increase the amount of air, the distance has to travel, you, um, uh, the amount of distance the air has to travel, when you increase the amount of distance the air has to travel, you lower the note. And by doing that, and uh, that in the trombone you have all possible, you can do it smoothly as well, you have all possible um, points, that's how you change the pitch. So by making air going through, uh, summing up, summing it up, kind of, kind of complex, summing it up is basically that by doing, by moving it, you're, you're manipulating the amount of air, the distance through which the air has to move, how much distance the air has to go, and that makes the note higher or lower. Okay, great, so now we know how to make the sound, we know it's anatomy. Let's move forward to the trombone sound itself, and it's um, position in the orchestra and ensembles and is a solo instrument, which is a good point. Okay, now a trombone, as I said, plays in the tenor range. That means it plays low but not too low, and, and it's part of the brass family. Now the tone of a trombone is very, very deep. Right, it's very, very, very deep. It's very, very, very. Um, yeah, once again, it's very hard to describe the tones in words, but it's very, very deep. It's very, very deliberate. It's, it's also um, quite thick as well. It's got a thick, deep, and deliberate tone. Bah, that kind of a tone. I'm, I'm really, I wish I had a trombone here to demonstrate to you what it would sound like. But unfortunately, I don't. But I can, you can bet you, bet, bet that you hear trombone music to figure out yourself what kind of tone the trombone has. But regardless, it's a low, deep, um, strong, powerful, and deliberate tone. Those are the adjectives. That's the best I can go with adjectives to describe how the tone of the instrument is, that's how it sounds, right, how it sounds. So that's what the trombone sounds like, and that's quite interesting. And then now let's get into how it, how it works in the orchestra and everything, because I can expand upon why that tone is quite important. Number one, the trombone is very important in the brass section because it adds lower harmonies and adds lower melodies in a lower register. The trombone is like the cello of the string, of the brass section, because the tuba, is overpowering. It's bah, It's very, very um, booming. That's the correct word for booming. Overpowering, just like the double bass. So it's not gonna do the lower. It's not gonna. It's, it, if tuba can lay the foundation, right? But it's not doing the lower harmony. It's not participating in too much. It's very booming. It's laying the foundation. The cello and trombone, as I mentioned, are the ones that are giving the lower harmony. So we have the trumpet, uh, which are giving the high harmonies. We have. The, the high parts where the French horn which are giving the middle parts and now the trombone which are giving the low parts for us. The tuba is also not in most orchestras. You very rarely actually see an orchestra with a tuba. Like most tuba, most orchestras don't have tubas and bottom out at trombones. Why? Because that's about as low as you need to go. And the, so this is responsible for giving most of the low sounds, the low melodies and the low harmonies. And such, as such it plays a supporting role in, so for the most of its in the orchestra, most of the period of time, the trombone is supporting the rest of the orchestra. The trombone is supporting it, it's giving it power, it's giving it either melodically or harmony, that means it's either playing music to complement the main melody or playing another melody which complements the main melody in which in whichever way it is some sort of supporting the rest of the orchestra and supporting the rest of the brass section, most of them. However, the trombone is also very good at playing melodies. This is where I come to. If you want a powerful theme or melody or sound. <clears throat> if you want it to be sharp and high, you use the trumpet. If you want it to be powerful and slightly low, you use the trombone. So whenever you want powerful, low, and um, yeah, powerful, low 
sounds, right? Melodies, whichever ones you want. Instead of using the string sections or the wind sections or the trumpet, you use the trombone. So we, whenever the composers want to write a powerful low melody, you'll always find the trombones are in use. And that's one thing which they use a lot. So either but when you're talking, yeah, you see the membrane basically. So the, the, my, my point is the trombones play in, in the orchestra quite a bit of melody as well. And then the rest of the orchestra is backing up the trombones this time. So the trombone can take the main stage at times. So most of the time it's supporting the rest of the orchestra, but at times it's more than enough, enough capable of taking up and being the main melody. And this, these times are when the composer wants a very strong, very powerful and low melody. When you hit these three boxes, you want to use a trombone. That's indeed what you find. So as I said, that's the dynamic it has an orchestra, usually supporting, um, adding the lower harmonies, but also sometimes taking up and having its own solo many melodies. Then we move to brass ensemble music. I actually don't see a trombone too much in brass ensemble music, but I do assume that once again it will be like a cello is in a quartet. Um, it will provide that. Though I think most people don't use a trombone in a um, quartet because these are very loud. I don't think I mentioned this. Trombones are very loud. They're not overpowering like tuba. Um, tuba are actually not that loud. But trombone played out. So I don't, I don't think people use trombones. I think they use baritones and um, instruments like that instead. So I don't think trombones are used all that much in ensemble brass music. However, I do believe that um, however, the trombones are used in solo. Once again, solo is also not that much. There is solo repertoire for trombones. It does exist. Solo repertoire exists for all instruments. And it, it, it's present. Right? There is solo repertoire for trombone. It's just not that much, right? It's not that much of a repertoire. So most trombones and most trombone stuff is going to happen, uh, you know, in a band or whatever. But in a classical music context, it's going to be a orchestra, right? So in the classical music context, if you're a trombonist, it's be most likely going to be playing mostly in an orchestra. Because brass and trombones don't use much trombone, and it doesn't have that much of a repertoire. That being said, that's really all I wanted to cover with the trombone. It's a beautiful instrument. I really like it quite a bit. That being said. From my side, um, this is the end. This is what I really wanted to cover about the trombone. Thank you very much for joining in, and I uh, hope you learned something valuable from this. Hope you walk, you walked away from this learning something more. Hope you found it relatively enjoyable. With that being said, I am. This is me wishing you a wonderful rest of the day. Bye. See. You.